Hey everyone, this is Pete from the ALF Zero team, and today I'm going to show you how to basically follow the, the, the first section of the guides, uh, which will get you up and running and joining the testnet. Not validating yet, but but getting you know getting the node and uh, and running it. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the prerequisites. You need Docker and wget. Wget will probably be installed by default on your Linux distribution. And as for Docker, you can just follow the links here and um, and get it for your for your particular distro. And we strongly recommend that you follow the instructions here about about um, using Docker without sudo privileges uh, for for sec security reasons and convenience. It's 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 really recommended. So now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and and clone the ALF node runner repo, which is basically where we host all the convenient scripts that, that will set everything up for you and and run an LF node inside Docker. Uh, you can also choose to, to build it directly from source. Uh, it's the method that gives you more control at the cost of being way harder, more cumbersome. But, but if you're thinking of running a very advanced setup, it, it might be what you need. But today we're gonna focus on the on the Dockerized way because it's just way more convenient and and probably the best for 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 the majority of people. So so yeah, once you've got the repo, I didn't actually run this command because I cheated a little and and I downloaded the the, the repository beforehand just to just so that I can get the DB snapshot so I can show you how it how it actually runs without waiting for it to download the DB. Um, but essentially, what you get here, the most important thing is the run node sh script, which which will take care of everything for you. Later in the guides, you will need to use the signer script. And also quite importantly, you've got uh, your your config. And here you'll be able to, to make some changes if you need to. Uh, most importantly for, for the majority of users, you will need to set the public address of your node in the lib lit p2p format uh, the guides actually tell you how to how to devise this address from uh from what you see in your logs and so on um but but i'm gonna skip it for now just to keep it simple there's a there's a whole section about exposing ports and then also about setting this so so we're gonna touch upon that later so for now let's just leave it at default it should it should work and yeah, simply what we're gonna do is run this script and I'm gonna use the long option. Now, when choosing the name, it's it's recommended that you that you stick to one name throughout the whole uh, testnet ecosystem, which means this name here that will show up on telemetry among other things. And and the on-chain identity that you will set in the in the later parts and in the name that you will be giving when you're filling out the form on the ALF0 website. And while not strictly necessary to, to, to run a node successfully, it's quite important for us to, to be able to, to, to verify you and let you in on testnet. And the whole reason we are doing the verification in the first place is because uh, on the testnet, the, the, the T0 currency is actually not not worth anything because you can freely get it from the faucet. So there's no way, no other way for us to, to prevent any civil attacks and, and general spamming. So we, we implemented this, this very basic verification to basically keep the network running smoothly. So I'm going to choose, I don't know, Pete's testnet tutorial, and I'm just going to run it now. If you run it like this by default, it will it will just start downloading everything, including the chain spec, the DB backup, which contains the whole state of the of the network, uh, and the Docker images. Now you can theoretically skip the the downloading of the DB backup by buying the sync from Genesis option, but please note that this is going to take 
a lot of time because the note is just going to be syncing from, from the very first block. So it's generally much faster to, to just let it download the DB snapshot by default. So yeah, let's go ahead. Um, now, if you're making some changes to the env slash validator file, you may want to back it up somewhere just because you'll notice that the script is auto updating by default. And if you change something, you're probably going to get some get conflicts in, in some situations. So it's good to have the backup uh, handy so that you don't lose your changes when you try to resolve the conflicts. Now you can see that I have the, I have the node running and I can check that this is really the case. So yeah, you can see that this was built from the release 7.1. So the, the current testnet release, the script will always keep this up to date. So you don't have to worry about manually bumping the version. Uh, you just need to kill the container and run the script again, and it will automatically pull the newest version. Uh, you can see some ports exposed. Uh, some of them are exposed only to local host, and that includes the metrics port, the RPC port and the WebSocket port. And the port 30333 is exposed to the world just because that's what the nodes use to communicate internally. And you'll notice that the container will be named the, the same as the name that you provided to the script. So we can use this name to, to inspect this, this container. And you can see that your node is syncing. Uh, you can see how far along it actually is with the syncing uh, because here's here's your block that you're currently at and here's what's the, the newest known block in the network. You can also see how many peers you've got. And in general, you can, you can check if there's nothing out of the ordinary here. Uh, in general, you should be seeing the syncing and after it after it stops syncing, you'll be seeing something like imported uh, some block. Um, also, you don't want, you don't want any errors here in general. And also, if you notice that uh, that the node has stopped syncing, well, I would advise that you reach out to us on our Discord or or Telegram. But sometimes restarting the node helps. Just a little just a little tip. Uh, one next tip is. If you want to actually see the logs in real time, you can just follow. And yeah, this is like tail minus F command, but for Docker logs. So yeah, now we've got a we've got a node running, and we should probably be able to see it on telemetry. Wrong address. Oh, that I owe, right. The ALF specific telemetry site is coming, but for now, for now we need to use the polka.telemetry. We can sort by, by the name and I should be here somewhere around with P, right? Here's my node. It's not producing any blocks, so because it's 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 not a validator um, yet. Okay, so right now it seems to work, and in the next chapter of, of this tutorial, we're gonna actually register here. Sorry, network's taking to 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 join the the waiting list of the validators. So yeah, thank you for for following and I'll see you I'll see you very soon.